Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Sienna here with a brand new video. Today, we are going over the stages of spiritual awakening. And this is really exciting stuff, so stay tuned. I'm going to start this video off by letting you all know that spiritual awakening happens to all of us. And it happens when our soul deems us ready. It's not necessarily an ego decision. Not everybody will experience all the same stages that I'm about to talk about in this video. And not everybody will experience all the stages in the order in which I put them. So just keep that in mind as we go ahead with this. The first stage is what I like to call life as it was. The way things were before you had your awakening. In this stage, many people are preoccupied with their material lives, not realizing that there is more to reality than they perceive with the five physical senses. It's often in this stage, I guess, where people start to feel like, huh, there's got to be more to life than this. I wasn't just put here to pay bills and then die. There's got to be something else. And this is around the point people usually start to um, question their world around them. And then we jump into the next stage, which I call the breaking point or the aha moment. Now, some realizations come on quickly and suddenly. Some realizations are figured out slowly over time, and these are realizations about life and the true nature of reality and the true nature of oneself. It's a reason why I kind of give it two names. So, okay, first of all, with breaking point. This point can be caused by many different triggers. I tend to call it the breaking point when it's sparked by um, a life-changing event or a trauma or some kind of just boom, huge epiphany or realization that just hits you like a ton of bricks and you go, oh my God, what do I do with this now? And then the aha moment is usually not so traumatic. The aha moment um, can be very gentle or very welcomed, could be brought on by some new information that you've learned, maybe something you've watched on TV or online or just some really, really important wisdom that somebody imparted on you that just stuck. The breaking point can take on many different forms. Like I was saying, for some people, it's very sudden. It can be very traumatic. It can be triggered by the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job or a relationship, um, a huge change in your socioeconomic status, or just something that really shakes up your personal status quo. Either way, call it what you want, breaking point or aha moment, this is the moment where a person goes, oh, and a light bulb pretty much goes off. Oh, so there is more to this world or there is more to life or maybe there is something that comes after life. That's the breaking point slash aha moment. The next stage, a lot of people call the dark night of the soul. I tend to call it darkness and healing, but okay, keep in mind that these labels are just labels. You can call these stages whatever resonates best with you, but I'm going to call this darkness and healing. And what happens in this stage is um, a lot of old traumas, old baggage, old pain may come back up. Stuff that you maybe forgot all about or purposely tried to squish down and repress. It can come back up because it's time for you to process this hurt and to release it. And that can be extremely, extremely difficult for some people because we all go through different things in life and some things are easier to heal from than others. The stage of awakening, a person may experience anxiety or depression or other emotional lows, um, especially when the ego self doesn't really understand what's happening the ego self loves its comfort zone and loves to just have everything just so just the way it was so that you can feel more or less comfortable and safe stepping outside of this comfort zone can trigger an insane amount of anxiety 
And many people do feel like they are losing their minds or that they're developing some kind of mental serious problem when actually that's not really what's happening. A lot of your darkness is being uncovered. A lot of your shadow work that you need to do is being revealed to you. And this is a wonderful opportunity. You're not going crazy. You're just healing. You're creating more room by releasing old pain. You're creating more room for new wisdom, new knowledge, new thought patterns to come in and guide you. Many people during this stage feel very world weary. They become aware of all of the problems in society or on this planet, and they can become very discouraged or saddened or angered or just exhausted by the injustices in our world. Um, I do want to make this very clear that if you need, it's okay to seek help from a mental health professional or a therapist or some kind of other um, healthcare worker because this can actually really help you to process some of your traumas. You don't have to process your pain alone. So therapy or another type of professional help can help you to, like I was saying, process all of your old pain, can help you to adopt new thought patterns, um, can help you to identify any cognitive distortions. So any thought patterns that are actually not true and not at all helpful to your life can help you to identify them so that you can know what you're supposed to replace. Be gentle with yourself during this time. Don't feel like you need to rush your healing process or push yourself too hard. If you want to only process a couple things at a time, that's fine. You don't have to dive all the way in and uncover every single thing all at once all in one day. You don't have to. It's extremely important to know that this stage does not last forever, that it will go away. Even though it might feel in the moment like it is just never going to end, it does end. The pain subsides. Some people don't even have such a difficult um, dark healing stage. But if you are having a difficult time, just know it's temporary. You're going to be okay. The next stage is a lot more fun, and I call it the research stage, research or searching. Um, and like I said, often a very fun part of awakening. Many people start researching or trying out various spiritual practices, or they become interested in things like energy healing or meditation or yoga or some other kinds of self-care practices. Some people find a spiritual faith during this time. Some people want to learn about other different faiths that may feel more true to them, may resonate a little bit better. During this time, many people feel very motivated and open-minded and energized. It's like diving headfirst into this newfound excitement. Usually, during this stage, this research and searching, um, the world for some people, the world is just completely different. It looks different. And for some, the world looks the same, but it feels different. Something just feels new or fresh, or there's some kind of new perspective that you have on life. This stage can last for a few weeks. It can last for a few months. For some people, it lasts for years as they, as they work out new things to try, new things to learn about new practices, new thought patterns, and they're starting to adopt all of these new habits and these new things in their lives, which then leads us to the next stage, which I call living it out. And that's when the novelty of the awakening wears off a little bit. It doesn't mean that your awakening has stopped. It just means that um, your new practices, your, your new habits, your new ways of thinking and perceiving reality start to feel a little bit more normal and a little bit more natural to you. you the, the, um, the excitement just calms down a little bit. Some people find they go from like ecstasy to calm joy, which is not a bad thing at all. Sometimes your life and or your circumstances do calm down a little bit, allowing you time to get used to this new reality. Living it out stage can last for a very, very long time before this spiritual awakening 
repeats because it always repeats multiple cycles of your awakening again and again as many times as you need throughout your life as you develop as you grow spiritually as you raise your vibration as you learn more and more wonderful amazing points of wisdom about this life and about the nature of reality and when the cycle repeats for some people it's gentler the second, third, fourth time around. And for others, it can be just as intense as that very first awakening. And I just want you to know that you do not have to compare your awakening to anybody else's because your awakening is yours. Your life is your own. Your journey is your own. And you're doing this all in perfect divine timing for yourself. And that was a very basic look at the stages of spiritual awakening. I want to thank you guys for watching this. I also really want to um, credit the late great philosopher Alan Watts because during a channeling session that I had with him, and you can find that on this channel, I'll make sure to put it in the end screen. I can throw a link in the description and I can put a card somewhere around here or something like that where we did talk to him about spiritual awakening and he gave me a lot of these beautiful um, points of knowledge and was telling me about these different stages of awakening. So if you want to check that out, absolutely, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend looking at some of Alan Watts' other um, works, some of his writings, listen to some of his lectures. You can find them all over YouTube. He's fantastic, amazing. Anyways, you guys, um, if you want me to do more videos on spiritual awakening, absolutely, I will. Just let me know if you want more and what kind of questions you have regarding awakening or the cycle of awakening. And we can talk about that right here on this channel. So remember to like and subscribe to Sienna Rose Metaphysical. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.